Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Tracksuit Rundown, where we talk about tennis topics, wearing tracksuits. I know it's brilliant. It's a brilliant idea for a show, so that's why we're bringing it to you. Alex, how are we doing, buddy? Doing amazing. It's been a couple weeks since we posted one of these Tracksuit Rundowns, yep. so I'm excited to, to get into it. I'm excited for this one. All right. Let's, uh, I think a good place to start is the, uh, the show that has been going on at the WTA Finals. I mean, we've seen pictures, scaffolding, like it's just a disaster. Absolute disaster. If, if you guys haven't been following the, the WTA finals and, and what's been going on, basically they've moved to Cancun, Mexico. Um, and just for context, to start it all off, they finished building the stadium last week, right? The tournament has already started. They finished it a few days before the tournament started. And you know what that's called? That's that's called efficiency. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's timeliness right there. Yep. Um, but you know, everything was normal until some of the WTA players started to speak out. Once they arrived to the stadium, they saw the conditions. And I'm not joking. When you say scaffolding, <laughs> you are about as accurate as you can get. Yeah. It quite literally looks like they just put some scaffolding together. Um, it, it, it looks worse than like some high school stadiums that I've seen. Sabalenka actually spoke out about it. And she was, I, I will say, Sabalenka, class act, she put it really nicely. She was just basically saying like, yeah, you know, like we couldn't practice on the stadium court for long enough. And she's like, I just, I just hope that, you know, the WTA kind of improves the situation for next year. Yeah. Like, you know, there were, you know, like some players must have been like, what the f- is this yeah. right? I mean, that's the nice way of putting it. Basically, saying like, get your shit together. Yeah. Um, no, it's an absolute mess. And on top of that, not only does it look like this stadium could, you know, is going to topple over and is something out of Final Destination, but on top of that, <laughs> you have, you have, uh, no one, no one's there. Yeah. Like, I mean, there, you know, obviously there are some fans there, but the stadium's pretty much empty. I mean, you have the best women in the world playing each other at the end of the season. Uh, the WTA and the ATP finals are, are a fun, you know, tournament. It's a fun event, uh, right? It's like, it's, it kind of ties a bow, you know, on, on each season. And it's the best in the world that are competing against each other yep. and no one's showing up. So it's just like the WTA has clearly gone wrong here and, and have really done a poor job. Um, it's just kind of, it's honestly kind of sad to see. It is sad. It's sad. And this see. goes, this kind of, it, it just wraps around my whole theory that I have that Alex disagrees with for <laughs> some reason. I don't know why, but my theory of the fact that I don't think people care about tennis anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just don't, I don't get that vibe that people actually care. Yeah. So you guys can let us know. I mean, do you guys still care about tennis? Do you not really care about tennis? Well, it's like, tough. It's tough to say because then some people might, you know, you go on Twitter or whatever and you read what people are saying about it. And they're like, well, people don't watch, you know, not as many people watch women's tennis as they do men's tennis. Well, that's not true because, you know, you look at the Australian Open. Yeah. Sabalenka was playing in the Australian Open final, right? More people watched the Australian Open women's final than they did the men's final. So women's and men's tennis are, are you know, yeah, so it's US not, Open, it's Coco not, Golf too. yeah, there's like, not yeah. a, there's not a huge difference in terms of viewership. There really isn't. And Do you think people just check out after US Open? I think after US Open happens, people kind of check out. I also think that, and this is just from what I've seen, I feel like when it comes to the WTA and ATP final, the ATP finals did a way better job because they built a base in London. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like London and I don't know how many years they, the ATP finals were in London, but it was a while. Yeah. Like London really brought it up because they did such a good job at that event. And so, you know, it was a cool blue court that, that, you know, they did a good job marketing it. So everyone, you know, it was a packed stadium. Um, the WTA hasn't really had that. I feel like they've moved around more. They went to Singapore for a little bit. You know, mm. uh, they were in, in Texas, right, last year. If I'm, Fort Worth. Yeah. Wherever, right? uh, they were in uh, Can now in Cancun, Mexico. They're just moving around a lot. They haven't had the time to build that base like the ATP has. Um, and that's I feel like that's really kind of shot them in the, in the foot a little bit. Uh, that's my theory, at least. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I... I, I am all like doom and gloomy with tennis overall, but I think they, I think the WTA can make it better you know, 100%, next year. 100%. You know, there's a lot of changes that they could do, but you know, you change the stadium from scaffolding to an actual stadium. Maybe don't 
I build a stadium right next to a highway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I think you take away the highway and the scaffolding. I think that's a big improvement. That's a right big there. improvement. I mean, so that's, you're, that's, you're talking about a giant leap yeah, right there. Yeah. Then also on top of that, so you have that, you have the WTA. <laughs> on top of that, you have Vienna just happened. Yep. Um, and you had Medvedev uh, with a, I feel like we were just talking about this the other day as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, with players hitting people in the crowd. Yeah. Um, he, Medvedev, Hit someone in the crowd. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video. Did you see the video? I did and how see the he, video. Basically, he didn't get disqualified. He didn't actually even get a warning. No. Uh, but if you haven't seen the video, the ball goes past him, hits the back of the court, which is like an advertisement. It's like a screen. And then goes towards his direction. And as it's going towards him, he kind of swats it away uh, in a defensive way. But... I don't know. That follow through was a little bit sketchy. It's a crazy it's, follow. It's through. a crazy follow through. If I'm swat, I'm just thinking about myself. Like here, you right? just tap it. If I'm thinking about myself, I'm trying to defend myself. Yeah. That ball's coming at me. I'm just gonna put the racket up. Just block it. Just tap it. I mean, that was a full swing. That's a swing. That's a swing. That's a swing. That's See, intent. It's really, it's really interesting. Okay, because you watch it. I will say this to to, to Medvedev's. Uh, I'll give him some benefit of the doubt. It's a fast ball. Yeah. The ball is coming in hot. Yeah. Okay. You watch the video in slow motion, you may get a different opinion. That's true. Right? Like a lot of the clips that are surfacing are in slow motion. You watch the video in slow motion, you're like, okay, this guy's taking a hack at the ball and then ends up hitting the, yeah. uh, uh, the, the lady in the front row. Yeah. But you watch it sped up like to normal speed and it, it's quick. Yeah. You know, it's quick. Of course it's quick. Yeah. And I don't... It, Realistically speaking, was Medvedev thinking, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blast this woman right behind me"? No, maybe not. He wasn't. Maybe I don't know. I don't even know if he was frustrated in that moment. Right. But that follow through in a slow motion type of video. Yes. It does now, look a little. Now, what bit I will say is suspicious. that was very much like ninja reflexes. Yeah. So I'm trying to imagine what would a ninja have done. Yeah. Would a ninja have been very like what you were saying, just like a quick little pat? Yeah. yeah. Or would have ninja just gone and done like the full, the yeah. full swing? I think the ninja would th would do the full swing. I would have been more impressed if he went Neo on it and he just did the whole like leaning back thing. Right. Um, right. To me, that's yeah. Like th the see, ultimate. that's another thing. Like, if you're, I mean, you're one of the top athletes, top tennis players in the world. Just Neo it. Yeah. Just just get out of the way. Yeah. The reaction time. You don't need the racket. Yeah, yeah. You know. You're also making millions of dollars. Just let it hit you in the face. Just let it hit you in the face. <laughs> yeah. Just black eye. Like, come on. But congrats. Speaking of Vienna. I mean, on a, on a serious note, uh, congrats to Yannick Sinner. Uh, great tournament. Yannick Sinner, Medvedev in the final. I, it's tough with these tournaments that are towards the end of the year. It's just after the U.S. Open, I feel like a lot of hype kind of dies down. We have Paris coming up next week, which I'm excited that for. That should be big. That should be big. Uh, Paris is always an exciting tournament. I love the court. It's like a green court. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. You know, and also France, like they, they're big tennis fans. So to have the tournament in Paris is great. And they get rowdy. They do get rowdy. They, get rowdy. they do get rowdy. It's just unfortunate sometimes most... I feel like most years players kind of pull out because they're they're tired or injured or whatnot. So uh, I hope that this tournament upcoming you know upcoming tournament's gonna be good. Uh, but we've had a couple successful. I mean, just because we haven't filmed in a while, uh, we had a couple tournaments that have been good. You know, Vienna. We had Japan Open. Shintaro Mochizuki. We posted the podcast. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Gotta the give guy's a, shout a legend, out. absolute legend. The, and um, did you notice how Alex timed that beautifully? He was sitting on the episode. He I had it edited. I'm I like knew Alex. It. Alex, post the episode. We, we, you know, we, we, we filmed that episode a couple months ago. Like, you want to film? He goes, Nah. You know what? I'm gonna sit on it for a little bit. <laughs> Boom. Semifinals. <laughs> post Taylor it. Fritz. Yeah. No. So this is why Alex is the brains of this operation. I'm just here to try to make some people laugh once in a while. Talk a little. But but yeah, talk a little. <laughs> but Alex is really the guy who was running this stuff. I don't know. Based that's on, a scary based, thought. <laughs> based, that's, a, that's a very scary thought. Very scary thought. Um, no, but so we've had a couple of good tournaments. Paris, Paris Open next, you know, Paris is next week. Uh, and then we have the ATP Finals as well that's coming up. So yeah. the season's coming to an end. But I know that there's one top. Steven, if you, if you haven't, if you're new to the channel and you don't know Steven, Steven loves money. I like talking about money. He loves money. He's a money guy. But no, let's 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 touch base on that. I am the least materialistic person in the world. Yeah, that's not why I like money. He loves to make money. I like no, I don't like to make money. Clearly, I I'm spending all my time <laughs> yeah. with this channel. We're not believe me, that's not what I'm doing here. But what I will say is, I like hearing about professional athletes and what they do with their money, or more importantly, how they make their money. Right, right. 
Because it's a fascinating thing because when an athlete comes into a sport, they're coming in for the love of the sport, right? right. They're training their butts off right. to try to reach that pinnacle, that high level in the sport. Because it's high risk. But too. then you it's, don't high, have, it's yeah, high risk. You, it's there's no high guarantee risk. of making yeah. any money. Yeah, there's, no, there's absolutely no guarantee. So you start off with the love of it. But then as you grow in the ranks of professional athlete, you get hit with all this money all of a sudden. Yeah. Now, specifically what I wanted to talk about with was Roger because I, I like to bring up Roger whenever we can because I miss him. Yeah. Okay. Big Roger guy. Big Roger guy. So so, Forbes came out with their 2023 list uh, for uh, of the highest paid athletes, and Roger Federer was on there. I think he was number nine overall. But what was super interesting? Maybe he was eight, eight or nine. But what what was super interesting about it was the fact that he highest paid tennis player for 2023 made 100k on the court. Yeah. 95 million off the court. Crazy. That's wild. Crazy. I, th- I I don't know if you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I think the only thing I can think of of him playing last year was Labor Cup. Yeah. I don't don't remember him playing anything else. Maybe he did. But I mean, 100K so, and 95 million off the court. So let me ask you a question. So if he didn't play that, if it, let's say Labor Cup was the only thing he played in 2022. If he didn't play the Labor Cup, would he have been on that list? Because technically, if he's not playing, is he considered like a, an athlete? Yeah. Like, does it, is it all athletes that compete? The way to, that's a great point. Like, was Michael Jordan on that list? That's a great point. So, so it's interesting. Maybe next year, if he wants to keep going. No, yeah, I think he, yeah, yeah I guess he, he just, would be off the list. Speaking, he's not technically a professional active athlete. Exactly. Wow, you're so blowing my a little mind sad. It's a little sad to think about, but... So he's retiring as the number one highest paid tennis player. Correct. He's going off. Correct. He's going out on top. Correct. But in a, in a speaking of Federer, I saw a video where apparently he has installed a gym in his home after retiring from the sport. So now he has a gym, and his whole thing is about he wants to stay healthy because he wants to play exhibition matches. So we're not we're gonna see Fed on court still. Are you sure it's because he wants to play exhibition matches, or do you think he's like you know what? Now I'm going to get jacked. Maybe. Like he's just going to hit, he's going to go into strength training. He's going to get roided <laughs> just up roided, and, roided and just get massive. Yeah, maybe. It, that would be a crazy listen, thing. I'm, I'm thinking there's that. Like I'm talking, imagine Federer with like a Conor McGregor sized neck. Like I'm talking like Conor McGregor now, like with that neck. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like imagine seeing Roger Federer with that. Imagine seeing Roger Federer with equally sized wrists. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen the difference between Roger Federer's right arm and Roger Federer's left arm. It is <laughs> ginormous of a difference. Right, right. And the reason I know this is because, because a, lot of one because handers, a lot of one-handers yeah. have that. It's the, it's the tennis. But imagine now, he's like, you know what? I'm really going to work on getting my left arm absolutely <laughs> massive so that for once in his life, his left arm is bigger than his right arm. I'm just, I'm just throwing out additional theories as to why... It could be yes, that he's I, getting a gym installed. Exhibition I, matches. He's going to play exhibition matches no matter what. This is what I have to deal with, guys. This is what I have to deal with. Like, am I wrong? Like, is that like a crazy <laughs> thing? I don't think it's that crazy. Oh, guys. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I mean, roided, fed, or exhibition <laughs> matches. It's one. It's one or the other. All right, ladies and gents. Wait, don't before, we have a point of the week? Yeah, we have a point of the week. <laughs> We have a point of the week before the we point? wrap up. Before we wrap up, we got to give it to our boy Shintaro. Yes. Listen, Shintaro, we, we got to late. we got to get to know him a little bit uh, at you know at the at IMG when we went there. Such a hard worker, such a good kid, self driven. You know, it's just amazing to see someone who's putting in effort, putting in hard work, and to see it pay off. Uh, and to see it pay off in Japan as well in his home country is amazing. So I want to we want to pay it. On the tracks, pay the tribute on tracksuit rundown. Uh, we're going to put up a, a great point against Taylor Fritz. Uh, but yeah, that's the point of the week. That's the point of the week. Love it. This is a short one. Short one. But I didn't just ex- as I didn't expect. Fun. I didn't expect to be talking about a roided up Federer. But see, that's uh, I'm glad that we I, did. I did. I'm glad that we did. Yeah. Um, ladies and gents, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, join the family. Hit the button. Um, we appreciate the support. We appreciate the love. Click the like button as well and share it with a friend. Anything, anything else, Steven? Nah, anything to add? Love you guys. We love you. Thanks for all your support. Peace.